Okay guys, so today I'm going to show you how to create a very common entry effect, uh, which I see a lot on a lot of pages. Um, and it's really, really easy to do with Brex Builder. Um, and I'm going to show you how that works. So I've got four images here as an example. If I take these two images out of the viewport, bring them back in, I see that cross effect there from left to right on the left-hand side, right to left on the left-hand. In fact, I'm going to slow that down. I'll come back to this show you so you can see exactly what's going on so there you go so we're going left to right and right to left and then we've got two images below that which are going bottom to top and top to bottom so do that again so out of the viewport and these ones go here whoops didn't go enough out of the viewport left to right uh, out of the viewport come in bottom to top top to bottom and these are all exactly the same class just with some modifiers to override variables it's a really really simple way to do it um, now, I will say I'm actually using Brix 1.9.8 beta. Uh, this is exactly the same 1.9.7. I just happen to have the beta installed on this uh, dev site. Um, so if you've got 1.9.7, this will work. Um, I do use uh, Automatic Thema so for all these productivity tools. And I do use Automatic CSS for my framework. Uh, but you don't need any of that. You can do this with pure bricks without any add-ons, uh, which is one of the most favorite things about bricks. It's just so capable. Anyway, coming back to it. So what we're going to do is we've got to look at the CSS for this first. I'm going to go to my first image. And what I've done is created just a block here with a grid. And again, these are ACSS variables. Uh, just a two column grid. And then I've got uh, four blocks here with my images in them. So it just sits in two columns. Okay. So the first one on the image, I've got a class I've created. I'll come back to this animate and viewport one shortly. Uh, class I've created called overlay wipe. And if I look at the CSS for that, there it is there. Now my root, I've got a bunch of variables, which is typically how I work. So it's easy to create overrides. And all I'm doing on this is setting my position relative to my root document. So that's the uh, root element, which is the image. I'm using actually a figure tag for this, but you can use whatever you like. Uh, and I'm setting my border radius and overflow hidden. You can set that in the UI instead of here uh, if you want to. So it gives you a bit more control over each individual element. Uh, this is just for testing here. So the most important one is position relative uh, because we're going to need that on every single instance of this. Okay, and then I'm actually then using my after pseudo select and I'll come back to why I've got this here. But I'm looking at my root, which is the overlay wipe, overlay wipe with the attribute data animate and then I'm going to add the after element position absolute inset zero so it fills the space uh, I'm not going to rotate on this because I've got on zero uh, I got a background overlay color Z index on two just stick it on top and all my animation uh, timing duration fill mode etc the most important one here is the wipe overlay uh, uh, animation name which is these keyframes and we're going to transform from the transform start to the transform end and we do that with variables up here so on this basic without any modifiers we're going to translate the x from minus 100 so 100 percent off to the left of that to 100 percent off to the right of that so it just there's nothing viewable shows it as it goes across and then disappears off to the right by 100 percent so that is the that in a nutshell as to how the first one works uh, and it's pretty straightforward as far as that goes. Again, I'll come back to this part. It's to do with when we want to animate. All right, so if we look at the next image. We've got exactly the same BIM block class on there, but we've also got another BIM block here called um, uh, overlay wipe dash dash reverse. So the dash dash is our BIM modifier, and all we're doing is overlaying, overriding our overriding our transform start and transform end so instead of minus 100 to 100 we're going to 100 so 100 percent to the right and then minus 100 100 percent to the left and that's our modifier and that's it we then have our second modifier which is the dash dash secondary and all we're doing is overriding the overlay color so this is a really really cool way to do it because all of your modifiers are very lean all you're doing is overriding variables all the work has been done on your main class here, on the main block, if you like to call it that, in um, with BIM. So it's a really, really good way to do it. Okay, then we have the next one, which is the, uh, we've got a overlay wipe with dash dash up. 
and we're instead of using the translate x, we're just translating y from 100% to minus 100%. So 100% down to minus 100% up. And then on the next one, we've got overlay wipe down, which is, uh, I'm not sure what they have in there, which is basically the same, but we go from minus 100% from the top to 100% from the bottom. And that's it. And then on this one, obviously, we don't have a any other modifier. So that's it. And that there, just these modifiers, gives us the scope to have all of these variations here and there. Okay, and oh, how cool is that? So really simple CSS, simple overrides, and we've got four different animations, and you can keep adding to this. You can put rotations on it. You might have a opacity uh, that you set on it. You might have a gradient that you set on it. So it's up to you, up to your imagination how you're going to use this. Now, the part that makes it uh, appear when we come in and out of the viewport, another really simple thing and really cool thing with bricks. So all of these images, I've got a class on it called Animate in Viewport. There is no CSS on that. I'm just adding an interaction to that. So when the, anything with that class enters the viewport, we're going to set the ad attribute of Data Animate. When it leaves the viewport, we're going to remove the class of data animate. And what that does is it allows us to use in our CSS, where it allows us to check to see if we have the attribute before we add the pseudo element. Uh, and it's as simple as that. So you can use this for any animation you like. Uh, if you want it to animate in the viewport, you just add animate in viewport to your element uh, and then use your rule with the data animate and then whatever you want to happen when that um, attribute is added. Pretty cool, I think. Okay, so um, that's it. That's how it works. Uh, I hope you like this kind of thing. Uh, it's uh, it's a cool way to work. There's one caveat, I should say, just as I think, and I keep uh, meaning to tell people this, there's only one caveat of this Animate and Viewport, and I really hope Bricks do something with this um, in the near future, and that's these Enter Viewports there is no threshold. So I can't tell it when it's fully inside the viewport, whether it's you know 200 pixels or 20% or from the top or from the bottom. As soon as any part of this element touches the viewport, this triggers, and there's no way that I can control that. So I'm really hoping that in one of the updates, since Bricks is putting so much into this beta, I really hope they put that in there. It will make these, this uh, end of viewport a hell of a lot more useful. Um, otherwise, you've got to use your own Intersection Observer or, you know, GSAP's um, scroll trigger or something like that. This would just make it easy. I, you don't need any other plugins, anything else. Just add your thresholds, and then you can use this. Um, unless you want Scrub, uh, GSAP Scrub, you don't need it. You just use pure CSS and these uh, interactions. So hopefully they'll add that in there. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. If you like this kind of thing, hit the subscribe, hit the like. Thanks, guys.